program you're interested in or the couple of programs you'll want to look at what, what they require. I do the GRE. I you, you may end up having to take both if you're interested in in a couple of pro programs and one of them requires GRE and the other requires the MCAT. Hi, um, if a P school, I guess, like gave you advice and told you to retake your GRE and retake a class that you made a C in, um, would you consider doing that or do you think your medical care experience would, like, no, I would do it. I would do it. I, I think, you know, when they have their formula of who's getting in, those numbers are heavy players, your GPA and your scores. And I, I did go back, I was missing like an algebra or something that they wanted, so I had to go back, just took a little summer course and fulfilled it. So absolutely, I wouldn't let that stop you. I would do it. If you had to retake a prerequisite, um, would you recommend taking it at a community college? Or do you think that might bring it back to I don't think they care where you took it from so much. When I had to do that little algebra class, I just went down to the local whatever school that was just to get it done. And I think it does depend a little bit on the community college. Um, I do know that there are community colleges that have AMP1 and AMP2, which is what we used to do. Um, and those are not accepted um, by different programs. But ACC's are. Um, I have to take one more class this summer after I graduate in virology. Does ACC have virology? Um, yes, but I don't think this summer. I think it's only offered one semester. Okay. I think it's only in the fall. Okay, thank you. Does ACC, it's combined A and P, right? They don't separate. No, we do separate it. We have a one semester anatomy, which you have to pass before you can get into our one semester physiology. But what if we've already taken, like, say, like, I, cause I did pass an anatomy here, but I just need to retake physiology? If you have, bring your transcript to me, I'll double check things and then give you permission. Aren't you glad you came today? <laughs> <laughs> that was worth it, right? <laughs> yeah, you're talking to the, the chair of the department over there in a few minutes, so. Right. You're talking about contacts. <laughs> <laughs>
my background is in forensic interviewing, so that's kind of where my expertise is, uh, is in interviewing. And uh, if it sounds silly, but one of the things that we do and we teach people to do when they interview is to interview themselves. Um, so to actually have those kind of prepared questions that you say out loud when you're getting ready in the morning, when you're driving in your car, when you're doing those things. So if someone were to ask you a question, actually rehearsing what your answer would be for that question. Um, and if you've rehearsed it a few times before you actually get asked the question, then you'll understand what your answer is going to be. You'll have that confidence and it won't come out uh, in kind of a, a uh, just not aggressive or not confident way. Does that make sense to you guys? Like, and why do you want to be exactly. a PA? Why is all I do you want to be a PA? Right. And you love primary care. <laughs> <laughs> Those are good. So yeah, confidence is something you can't fake. Uh, so it, you really have to, to build that, and there are, uh, there are people who are really great at it, and there are people who have to really work at it. So if it's something you have to really work at it, you have to practice it. You have to practice talking to people. Take every opportunity that you can to talk in a small group setting, to talk one-on-one, -on -one, to rehearse those things with your peers and then with other people who are in the profession. And if you're mentoring with someone, that is a great opportunity to say, hey, can you sit down with me one-on-one -on -one and let's role-play some interview questions or some things so that you know what you're going to say when you walk in there. Do you think it's like a red flag when the applicant applies like, you know, like all of the PA programs at once? So they might think like, all oh, this person isn't dedicated to this. Well, there's 150 levels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be a red flag. I would say, you know, if, if look in your region, like where you want to be, where you want to live. And I think I applied to four or five kind of around Minnesota, the upper uh, area. So do you think that like, going on like campus tours is important? Oh, yeah. I, it wasn't for me. I just knew wherever I got in, that's where I was going. I mean, it was that competitive that it was, you know, wherever you got in, you just go. I mean, we picked up and left Minnesota and went to Chicago to go to PA school. So. I, just, I have a former student who's just gotten into PA school uh, on Long Island, and the school itself, the philosophy of the school, is what attracted him to it. Um, I, he asked me to interview him, that was a lot of fun. Because any time he would say something outrageous, he would take his tie and act like he was hanging himself. <laughs> he, he was. But um, he decided that he was interviewing them as much as they were interviewing him. He wanted to make sure it was a good fit for him to move that far away. Um, so, you know, if you. To me, it's a sign of confidence that you will be a good candidate to say to the people you're talking to, and what, I know what I can bring to you. What can you bring to me? What is your um, job placement success rate? Um, you know, something along those lines. And it does show confidence and maturity to, without being too uh, pompous. Be able, to, be able to say, you know, uh, I've got something to offer you, but I also know that I need something that you need to offer to me. And can you do that? Keep in mind, too, PA school, you're on that campus for 12 to 15 months. And then you're off on clinical rotations at various clinics and hospitals and things. So you're not really on that, not, not like a four-year bachelor's degree where it's really important where you are and how you love the school and things. Case school is just short enough that 12 to 15 months and then you're kind of out after that anyway. So for me personally, a campus tour and stuff, I mean, it's all right or whatever, but it was so short term that it didn't matter a lot. I, just really, I wanted to be a PA and I was willing to go wherever it was that was going to give me that shot. So. Um, I want to apply LSC, but like, it's just really expensive. By here, there's like a program you can do after you graduate from school where you work in the rural area. Yeah. Off your lungs. Could you elaborate on that? Um, I didn't actually do that, it, and it's pretty particular. Um, I, you know, it's also one of those things where you have to purposefully go look it up and 
what, what are their measures and requirements to be able to do something like that. Um, and see if it really is something you want to go for. Is it something you apply for? Like yeah, you have to be accepted into those um, tuition repayment programs. Right. And it can be, it, I mean, I remember in Minnesota, it was really going to be in Timbuktu and not something I was comfortable. I wasn't comfortable coming right out of school and managing this whole population on my own. And the only person I could talk to was like 150 miles away by phone. And if I had somebody crumping on me, that, that isn't the level of supervision I wanted at that point. So you have to look at some of those things and take into consideration and, and just you know be, be aware before you sign up for something like that. You know, a, a PA degree is a PA degree, kind of. And it doesn't really matter which program you come out of. It, it's, it, you, you have your, your degree, and a license is a license. You know, all kids are pretty much considered equal. It doesn't really matter so much where you came from. I have to say I really appreciate what y'all are doing. I, I uh, this is not my first career. This is, in fact, my second career. And if it weren't for going back and taking the GREs, I'd think about PA school. Uh, you're never too old to go back to school. You're never too old to uh, transition from uh, construction into something else. My first career was training horses. I, I got a master's degree along the way, which, which helped, but, um, you know, and I've taught uh, at the college level off and on through the years, but uh, uh, you're never told to make a change. So have knowing that there's an organization out here that is aware of, of the need for women to get a hand up quite often to break that glass ceiling is uh, is terrific. So keep up the good work. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, all right, we will let you guys go. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>